Are you ready? Cody, the videographer, is back. It's time to rejoice. We have video quality. And you can actually hear the audio without a crackling echo. So what are we about to do? Want to know why? Ask how. I've been asked not to shout the next part. Howard! The humongous! America, in my humble opinion, has one of the best civilizations in the history of mankind. You'll probably disagree with that. Yes, we have been violent. Yes, we have been nasty. Yes, we have done ruthless and terrible things. But we've been far less violent, far less nasty, done far less ruthless things than any other major civilization in the history of the planet, including Rome and including England, which dominated in the 19th century. But because we don't believe in ourselves, and because we have a false philosophy of a shrinking planet and limits to growth, and the idea that we should jettison all of the things that have made our lives good, we are about to lose our leadership position. What the hell am I talking about? You know that Buzz Aldrin kidnapped me six or seven years ago into founding a group called the Space Development Steering Committee, and that Edgar Mitchell, who's the sixth man on the moon, has supported me in this. Um, a program director from the National Science Foundation is one of those who's mentored me in this. People from NASA have contributed to dragging me into this, and the people from the National Space Society are extremely supportive. Well, the person who runs the National Space Society Mark Hopkins went to China um, two months ago, actually in September, the end of September. I could have murdered him. I wanted to go with him, but we couldn't afford it. What did Mark discover there? There was a conference on space solar power, on harvesting solar power in space and sending it back to Earth. The Chinese are into this with both feet. The Chinese sent 10 people. In the process of that conference, the Chinese explained to Mark that they are about to petition the Chinese government for an increase in their budget to between $20 million and $35 million a year to explore the possibility of harvesting solar power in space and transmitting it down to Earth. Do you have any idea of how much America spends on harvesting solar power in space? The figure is so close to zero, it's ridiculous. In the entire seven years that I've been involved with this project, they have only coughed up $100,000 for one pitiful study of the subject. Frankly, they already had enough studies of the subject, and $100,000 is enough to buy paper clips, not to do a serious study. Why is this important? The world needs energy. People in Africa, people in the poorest regions of Asia, all of them have a right to live the way that we do. And we, frankly, have the right to live a life that's 10 times as good as the life that we currently have now. And to do it, we need energy for this planet. People like Paul Ehrlich, the author of The Population Bomb, and his very good friend, um, John, what is John's last name? Uh, John is the head of the science office for the President of the United States. Um, these people believe that we live on a shrinking planet and that we should not use energy at all. They are violently against the use of energy. That is a crazy, nutty idea. When bacteria first started on this planet 3.85 billion years ago, their big trick was taking poisons and turning them into pleasures. Um, taking deserts and wastelands and turning them into wonderlands. How did they do it? They took poisonous molecules and turned them into energy sources. That's what life has always done. Life has liberated energy from the most impossible environments and terrains possible. It has taken dangers and perils and turned them into energy sources. If bacteria did that, in order to create life on this planet. If plants did it in order to create life on this planet, if even animals have done it to create animals on this planet, why should human beings be different? After all, this is a planet in which life has grown from a teaspoonful of cells. A teaspoonful. 
3.85 billion years ago to at least covering the planet thinly on its barren surface. And that is just the start of what life wants to accomplish. Look what life did with photosynthesis, with cyanobacteria, photosynthetic bacteria, 3.85 billion years ago. There was this stuff called radiation. It was poisonous as hell. And bacteria harvested it. They grabbed photons, these things that hit with the force of bullets, and they pulled them in as energy sources and used those energy sources of photons, of light, to knit together carbon dioxide and water into the forms of things we know as life. That's what nature and green stuff are all about. And people like Paul Ehrlich with the population bomb want to deny the entire history of life and turn back the clock. Don't they know nature's imperatives? Today, two of the leading climate scientists in the world. One is James Hansen. He was with NASA. He has been one of the leading climate activists for 30 years. And three others of his ilk got together and sent a letter to the environmentalist community. In that letter, they said, sorry, we are operating under an illusion. If we think that we are going to be able to create enough energy for man's needs and the needs of life in general, just using the two renewable sources that we know best, solar energy on the face of the earth, and wind energy. We are fooling ourselves. We will come nowhere near supplying the energy that mankind and womankind needs and deserves. So what was their conclusion? What were they begging their fellow environmentalists to do? To turn to nuclear energy. Well, nuclear energy is a lot safer than alarmists like me make it out to be. The number of people who lost their lives in the Chernobyl disaster was actually very small. The number of people who lost their lives in the Fukushima nuclear accident of 2011 was very small. But three million people had to be evacuated from their homes in the case of Fukushima. And the Fukushima nuclear plants still haven't stopped belching poisonous stuff. Right now they are pouring poisonous radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean almost every single day. And someday that water is going to reach you and me. Is this really the way we want to solve our energy problems? Look, there is an energy source that produces no carbon footprint, that produces no greenhouse gases whatsoever. It's a, car, it, it's a source of energy that produces no energy wars, no resource wars. Why? Because it's infinite, and no single nation can control it. It's the same energy source that cyanobacteria learned to use 3.8 billion years ago when they harvested the power of photons coming from the sun. It's the same energy source that plants used to coat the face of the earth with green. It's nature's own energy source. It's called the sun. And there is an infinite amount of this sun power over our heads. It's five times as strong up there as it is here on Earth. You don't need to coat an entire desert with solar panels and wipe out the ecosystem that supports everything from ants to lizards in order to harvest it. Not at all. And we've been using it since 1962. In 1962, we put up the first commercial satellite. That satellite looked like a beach ball and was covered with what looked like medallions. Do you have any idea of what those medallions were? They were solar panels. They were harvesting solar energy. They were sending that energy back down here to Earth, transmitting it. Transmitting it. We've been doing that ever since, and today it's the basis of a quarter of a trillion dollar industry, the commercial satellite business, the communications in your cell phone, the communications if you subscribe to DISH TV, the communications in your home even if you don't, as you are tapping into soccer games on the other side of planet Earth, all use space-based solar power, solar power harvested in space and sent down to Earth. 
the nation that leads in the harvesting of space-based solar power is going to lead the world in the last half of the 21st century. Why? Because it will be rich as hell. It will have resources beyond belief. Secondly, because it will have taken up the technological challenge of taking this energy source that we've been harvesting now for 51 years. They will take up the challenge of lifting it to the next level. And in the process, they will create the technologies of the last half of the 21st century. The technologies that change the nature of living worldwide the way that cell phones and laptops, both developed in the United States, have changed the nature of living over the last 25 years. That nation right now looks like it's either going to be India or China. Almost certainly China. Why? Because China has the vision to see this. Mark Hopkins, the man who runs the National Space Society, said that whenever he opened an argument, whenever he tried to explain what the advantage of is space solar power to the Chinese, they got it on the very first sentence. They didn't have to be convinced. Here, people like John Holdren, who is the buddy of Paul Ehrlich, the guy who runs um, Barack Obama's uh, science establishment, doesn't want to hear these things. He's too busy wanting you to throw everything you use that uses energy away. I'm sorry. Life has never expanded. Green stuff has never expanded by throwing stuff away. Green stuff has always expanded by turning garbage into gold, by turning trash into treasure, by turning toxic waste into treats and deliciousness. If you don't have a sense of exhilaration about the future, do not try to lead us because you will destroy us. And I'm talking specifically to John Holdren, and I'm talking specifically to Paul Ehrlich if he is still on this planet. Stop trying to destroy a country that gave us freedom of speech, that reduced the number of deaths in war from 200,000 in a day, which is how many were killed in a day of World War I, to 200,000 in 10 years. 200,000 is too much. No person should die of violence. But that decrease in violence is astonishing. Don't try to take our civilization away, and don't pretend that you can lead the United States of America and the Western world. Give us our space solar power now. This is Howard the Humongous speaking to you from the future. And it's your job and my job to make 